Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Star Wars Lore. Now in this episode I'm going to be featuring the Trade Federation's multi-troop transport. In order for the Trade Federation's invasion of Naboo to succeed, they required a way to deploy a vast number of troops and equipment. Now, following the direction of his shadowy leader, Darsidius, the Trade Federation's Viceroy, Newt Gunray, ordered a massive landing of troops from the Nemodian Battle Droid Army. At the forefront were the distinctive MTT transport units that carried legions of droid soldiers into the fray. After the Battle of Geonosis years later, the Clone Wars saw the MTT used by almost all of the Separatist leading factions, and it tended to become a bit of a chillingly common sight in the galaxy. Now, the multi-troop transport, which was commonly known as the MTT, was designed and constructed by the technicians of the Bact Bactoid Armor Workshop, which was an agency the Trade Federation also recruited to manufacture its armored assault tanks or AATs. Now, the Bactoid had long been subcontractors to the Trade Federation, building weapon systems for customers of the Federation. So when the organization began a shift towards creating its own secret army, Bactoid were in the perfect position to assist them. The initial design brief was to create an armored repulse lift troop carrier vehicle from which battle droid units could quickly deploy into combat environments. Now, the outline called for an open staging area inside the MTT where droids could stand in skirmish lines prior to activation. Now, the Bactoid workshop staff were known for their innovative techniques and came up with the concept of an extendable deployment rack which could more than double the number of battle droids carried in each vehicle. Operated by a single droid on the lower deck of the MTT and supervised by a droid overseer on a catwalk above, the rack would telescope out of the oval main deployment hatch on the transport's bow, driven by an extensor drive between the repulsor lift engines. And when at full extension, this opened out to release a full complement of 112 battle droids, ready to be activated by signals from their droid control ship that was in close planetary orbit. Now, while on the racks, the battle droids would hang in a sort of squatting down, squatting hunkered down position, with their blaster rifles stowed to minimize storage space. Now, the MTT's deployment rack proved so useful that the Federation used it in another transport vehicle, retrofitting a series of repulsive sleds to use the same technology and redesignating them as their platoon attack craft troop carriers, or PACs. Now, once a multi-troop transport had deployed its battle droid load into a war zone, the operator and overseer droids would draw their own weapons and stand guard over the vehicle, reverting to their primary roles on queue when the deployed soldiers returned from their missions. Now, two more battle droids, designated as the pilot crew by the blue trim on their chests and shoulder pads, would sit at stations on the uppermost deck of the MTT in the control room. Now, thickly armoured like the rest of the transport, the control room had cons consoles, for its driver and a combined gunner slash engineer slash co-pilot. Now this area of the of the multi-troop transport also held the receiver assembly for the control signals broadcast from the droid control ship. And now when we move on to how the vehicle actually performed, you can see that as a troop carrier, its offensive systems were not of the highest importance to the operation of the MTT. Now, defense of the unit came primarily from its toughness. The multi-troop transport's blocky, steep-sided design came from a need for thick armor plating on almost all the vehicle surfaces, making it heavy and slow, but capable of shrugging off light blast, light blaster fire and indirect missile hits. Now, two pairs of twin blaster cannons were mounted in forward firing ball turrets for medium range defensive fire. The turrets could elevate or depress to approximately 45 degrees above or below the horizontal plane. Now when combined with heavy frontal armor, the blasters were most typically used to weaken or hold exterior walls so that the MTT could force its bow into a building and open its main hatch, pouring its cargo of battle droids into the target complex. Now, for less permanent structures, the MTT's bow was reinforced by case-hardened metal alloy studs, making it capable of ramming its way through even the largest of roadblocks. Now, the MTT was a repulsive lift driven vehicle, the transport managed to manage to gain a top speed of over even ground of roughly about 35 kilometers an hour and was capable of hovering at a maximum of four meters at full power 
although typically it would cruise at just under a meter from the ground. Now, the, the mighty repulsive discs powered by a pair of uh, premium Mark II generators from the Kuat drive yards would cause a massive displacement of air beneath the multi-trip transport as the exhaust and cooling system outputs were vented downward. Now, over dusty ground, this effect tended to create dust plumes in, and a windstorm. Viewed head on, the craft often resembled a charging behemoth. Now, multi-trip transports were also deployed planet side to planet side staging areas aboard C-9979 landing ships in groups of 11, forming units of over 1,232 battle droids in each group. Now, some variants of the MTT were altered internally, with the droid deployment rack removed to carry other hardware and personnel such as units of droidy cars or organic troops. The Trade Federation, Assault on Naboo, marked the first operational combat deployment of the multi-trip transport, the craft having only seen action previously in training exercises on remote Trade Federation controlled worlds. Now, the revelation of the Trade Federation's duplicity in the invasion of, invasion of Naboo led to the impounding of all their MTT units, although it is believed that some of the transports were disarmed and co-opted for civilian use by the gun government. The success of the MTT led to it becoming a core vehicle for the Separatists during the Clone Wars. And the droid racks were adapted to fit B2 super battle droids, or taken out entirely to allow the vehicles to carry other units into the fray. Now, after the war, these robust vehicles found their way into many pirate and smuggler operations, and, once disarmed, into more, into more legitimate concerns. And that is some Star Wars lore about the Trade Federation's multi-trip transport or MTT. So if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. I'll give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. I'll leave a comment or two for your thoughts on the video. And I'll talk to you all next one, guys. I'll catch you all later.